Arduino CNC Shield makes it easy to get your CNC projects up and running. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and having the patience through all the build montages. This is my first time trying to assemble a CNC from scratch and uh, this is a relatively new project on Thingiverse, so I figured I would share my experience with uh, anybody that wants to watch. I'll start at the beginning because I think it's important that you have the background. I was always amazed by how enabling tools were. Uh, for instance, when I got my first compound miter saw, uh, I was able to cut straight lines on wood. I was able to cut right angles pretty easily. So framing uh, became somewhat simpler, actually a lot simpler uh, than, you know, with a jigsaw or with a, a, just a circular saw, which were also enabling tools. Uh, but, you know, it really kind of became apparent when I got my first 3D printer, which all of a sudden I could print whatever I could think about and put into the computer. I want to see how enabling having a CNC router will be. I want my kids to grow up in a place where they feel they can make anything they want. Where they learn the tools and the concepts that are probably going to be important uh, in the future. And it's fun messing around in the workshop. So I'm going to be releasing my footage in chronological order because I go down some blind alleys and I learn some lessons that I think are important. Anybody that's building the multibot might find the learning experiences worthwhile. In any event, following are some of my tips for constructing the multibot. Now some of these tips cover material that have not been in the videos yet. Thread holes before the install. So in the video you see me using uh, a threader uh, uh, to make the threads for the screws so that they can tap easily. Do the brass inserts, the heat set brass inserts before assembly. <laughs> Mark what cables are attached to what when you get them back to the control box, you'll be wondering which ones are what. Attach the limit switches to the Z-axis carriage before assembly. Put in the limit adjustment screws before assembly. The correct way to install the X-axis carriage is with the linear rod holding brackets down. If you're gonna buy the cables, just do your own get shielded cables and uh, it can't hurt to buy a connection, a box of the uh, connectors and the, uh, the, the, the compression tool. Check the stepper motor wire cables and the, the order that they are pinned into the connectors at both ends. If the steppers don't turn but just kind of jitter, uh, no matter what commands you send the router, try swapping the inner two cables on one of the connectors. Put the lead screw bolt on the stepper motor side of the part. It might help with wear uh, on the bushing. If you're getting a lot of limit switch noise and EMI or electromagnetic interference, try using an octocoupler isolation board instead of uh, or before other mitigation methods like uh, shielded cabling or um, or the capacitor and resistor fix suggested by the Gerbil GRBL uh, folks. Thanks for watching. Please click the subscribe button and smash that bell if you like the episodes and want to be informed of upcoming releases. Now, without further ado, let's get to that build montage.
mostly done. So this is X1 and Y1. This is Y2 and Z1. And that's all the limit switches I have, thankfully. Thank you.